Let's talk a little bit more about the energy and excitement here, particularly that which has been uh, has come from the celebrity endorsements and the pop stars and rock stars that we've seen on the stage. We can speak now to Mark Harvey, who's an associate professor at St. Mary's University in Kansas. Mark, thanks for being with us. We saw Oprah Winfrey last night. We saw performances from John Legend. There are a few high profile female pop stars we're told due here tonight. What does all of that bring to the campaign? pain? Well, it brings energy. It brings excitement, right? It, it really has set a different tone. Do they work though? Energy and excitement is one thing, but does that translate into voter turnout and does it translate into the voters that you want? Well, that's the key question, right? Based on my research, it probably doesn't make that much difference in the grand scheme of things, right? When you ask people how they vote, typically they're more interested in saying, okay, it's my party identification, it's ideology, it's gas prices, it's the economy, right? Those are the things that motivate most people to vote. And in this particular election, a lot of people have already chosen sides, right? They already know what they're doing. And so what we're really talking about is this sort of middle, the few votes that where we don't know exactly what's going to cause them to vote, right? Is it going to be the rain that keeps them away? Or is it going to be, I'm a Swift D and Taylor Swift says I should vote this way, so therefore I should. So the fact is, is that it's not that they don't matter necessarily. It's just that it's very difficult to prove what that impact is going to be. There's only one case that I know of where we have proven a definite impact, and that was Oprah Winfrey. Of course, they strategically placed her up last night, and it's. I would be surprised if there would be no impact from this endorsement. And you mentioned Oprah Winfrey. She she made specific the point to say, I'm an independent. I'm calling on all the independents out there to follow my lead and to vote this time for Kamala Harris, even if you don't vote Democrat on the rest of the ticket or any other time again, but please do this time. Will that message carry through? It might. I mean, she's speaking at the Democratic National Convention in front of a bunch of people whose minds are already made up. So the appeal that she's making to those people who, by saying, I'm an independent and you should listen to me, and she's appealing to those people in the middle, those people who might be tuned in, who might be pay, paying attention, and who might be swayed. And the way our electoral system works, just those tiny number of votes might make a huge difference in any given state. And celebrity endorsements are one thing, but what about the opposite of that when celebrities are markedly against a candidate? I'm thinking of Beyonce. She's given permission to Kamala Harris to use her song Freedom as her walkout song and lots of rumours as to whether Beyonce may in fact be here in person later tonight. But she's considering a cease and desist order against Donald Trump for using that very same song in a campaign video. Does that harm a candidate when someone so high profile is so negative towards them? Again, that's a hard thing to discern given all the variables involved, but there have been lots of people asking Donald Trump to take stuff down. And I don't think it's necessarily affected Donald Trump in any way. So I'm not sure that it works both ways in this case. It does draw attention to it. I do think that music when played in the moment can make an extremely strong emotional impact. I did some additional research playing, looking at different candidates as to whether music was playing or not playing dur during the certain speeches and walk-up situations. And the music itself in the moment can make a lot of difference. Whether or not a protest and something negative makes a difference, I, I'm not sure. Well, those live performances definitely bring something to the television aspect of these conventions. We'd Kid Rock at the RNC and we've had a host of, of people here at the DNC. So we'll wait to see what that means in terms of the results in November. Mark Harvey, Associate Professor at St. Mary's University in Kansas. Thanks for speaking to us on BBC News. Well, we will have lots from the Democratic National Convention here in Chicago. We'll have lots more later here throughout the night and into the early hours of the morning when those speeches and musical performances indeed will take place here. Back over to you.